Ladies and gentlemen, today is December 31st, New Year's Eve 2013. This is going to be the last daily of this whole year. I won't see you guys till next year. But today is episode 143. I'm your host, Keenan Lafferty, and this is the show where we learn to be better artists. And today is Tutorial Tuesday, so we actually get to say that. Today we're going to be t doing a tutorial on exposure. And that can have a lot of different meanings, especially being an artist. But today we are specifically focusing on light exposure. How um, exposing your character to different forms of light can affect the colors and all that good stuff. But before we get into that, we got a plethora of things that have been submitted to the Facebook. So unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to uh, say thank you to every single one of these because we got a lot of scrolling to do. In fact, I'm going to do it like this. Uh, but I will say thank you to everyone who has been submitting. And in case you are not familiar with the new rules, uh, by submitting your work onto the Facebook, you now deem it uh, applicable to whatever Wednesday, where I will be drawing, I will be picking randomly one of these pictures, or just a few of these pictures, and I'll be drawing them in my style on Wednesdays from here on out. So, with all that being said, yes, and not to mention the break, we got a ton of art. So thank you guys once again to everybody for coming out of the shells, submitting to the Facebook. For those of you who haven't done so yet, please click the link down below if you're watching on YouTube. Submit your stuff to the Facebook. Last but not least, I want to talk about the Patreon. Thank you guys so much for joining me and supporting on Patreon. And basically, I'm doing this thing where it's called Pay What You Want, because basically what you do, you can support the comic for as little as $1 a month. And basically what happens is that gets totaled right here. And when this reaches $80, right, collectively, I'll be sending every one of my patrons this print for free. For free. It's Reclining Emma. She's got a cute little hoodie on and a beanie and all that good stuff. So if that sounds like something that's interesting to you, please do so. But with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and get into the tutorial. The reason why I know you showed up. Let's get into that. All right, close that crap down. All right, so exposure, exposure. What is this? What is exposure? Why is this beam of light happening? Why is she being abducted by aliens behind her? Well, the first thing that I want to talk to you guys about is um, let's go ahead and just take a look at a couple pictures. I think that might be the way to do it. Okay, so what I want you guys to understand is, okay, so remember those days back in grade school where you'd be sitting, sitting in the, sitting in your classroom, right, and you just, you can't wait for recess, you know, the teacher's boring, they're talking about something, talking about the Cherokee Indians or something, you're not paying attention, you're drawing at your desk, you know, getting in trouble constantly because you're drawing and not listening, as I did, right, but then the, the bell rings and you can go outside to recess, but as soon as you step outside of that door, you're just blinded by the light, the sunlight, just everything outside is so much more bright than it was indoors. Your eyes have to adjust to it. And this is something that, this is the first thing I want to touch on, because this is what exposure is all about. Basically, what's happening here, and what I'm going to be demonstrating to you guys today, is depending on your environment that your character is set in, you want to think about it as, you know, when, it, when it's darker, when you're in a darker environment, your pupils, right, will open wider to let more light in. But because of the relativity, right, because of the relativity of the brightness of the room versus the brightness of the sunlight outside, you'll often get this type of effect. Even though we know outside is, you know, it's the blue sky and green uh, grass, it appears as this blown out white. Whereas everything else on the inside looks normal. It's like, oh yeah, that's the, I can look around my room and that's what it looks like. Okay? So, um, another example of this we'll go into actually later with Emma and how exposure was incorporated into this. Let's go ahead and move on to something else. But really what I want to drive home today and what I'm going to be explaining and demonstrating to you is how exposure works, right? Like notice how the sunlight is now being, it's now interacting with the, the shade, right? It's basically like the lighter parts, the lighter parts are almost look sort of normal, even a little bit blown out, but then the shadows become much darker. Like notice, just look at the difference in the contrast between this grass that's receiving the sunlight and then this grass that's not. It's super dark, super crazy contrast. Same thing on the walls here. These walls are being nearly blown out to white, but then we go to the shadow and it's like this super dark brownish gray. Very interesting. And this is something that has always puzzled me. It's like, how do people make it look like it's a bright picture? And a common thing that I used to do, a mistake that I used to do, was I was like, oh, let's just make all the colors bright. Right? But really what you need to do, this is another 
is another example of that. See how everything outside is just blown out? This bush back here is just like this yellowish green, and the, the street, which is black asphalt, is now reflecting white everywhere. Same thing, the relativity of the light. You want to keep these things in mind. Okay, same thing here. Uh, I think this is the last one. Or no, there's one more after this. Um, see, everything's blown out outside, whereas the inside is all this nice... I really like the color of this one. I like the mood that this this piece gave off. I might actually be using this. Actually, I will be using this in the upcoming page of Emma. And uh, you might be asking me, well, why does this all... What's the, what's the point of this? Where can I use this? Right? And a big thing that I really wanted to get good at using exposure for was to create these bright pictures such as... <gasps> Sexy anime girls at the pool. Look at this. It's like, oh, okay, so their skin is now bright white, but then the, you know, like, look at the difference between the shadows. See how the shadows, again, they're doing that same thing. The Right here, it's blown out to white, but then the shadow is like this dark blue. So the darks become darker, and the lights become lighter. All right. Now, with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and move into the actual demonstration with our own sexy anime girls. Okay. So I'm going to first kind of, I'm going to shade this first character in a way that's kind of like, it's kind of normal, right? Like anybody would, would shade the character this way. It's just kind of like, eh, all right, you know, the usual way I go about coloring a uh, character. And then I'm going to show you a little bit more of the, um, a couple exposure tricks and how to achieve those. Okay. So for many of you know, I like to paint light now as opposed to painting shadow onto my characters because I feel it's a lot more... Well, it's a lot more natural, okay? So let's say that, um, let's just go with a nice, safe, top right light, okay? So we're going to be getting a lot of light right here on the skin, right? We're going to get light here, we're going to get light here. So I have to go ahead and I'll just paint the light right on, okay? Like that. And then you can have a little bit of subsurface happening, which is basically between the transitions. You can go ahead and add in a little bit of that um, saturation saturation, which is uh, something, uh, another whole thing that I've gone into. I've gone into subsurface scattering and all that stuff, but regardless, we're focusing on skin today. So you go ahead and lay in your lights, and then let's go ahead and just uh, cut back in here. We'll just lay down some quick cast shadows, okay? Immediately, your character is starting to take shape, starting to look like it's lit. Ah! Ah-ah! Okay, and let's throw in a little bit of blush on the cheeks, because that just makes... All of our girls look oh so cute. Okay? And there you have something that is pretty simple. Okay? Let's do the same thing with the hair. Okay? So we're going to go ahead and just... She's got pink hair, right? Because all anime girls that are worth their salt have pink hair. Okay? Because <laughs> they are realistic. <laughs> so let's go ahead and light this. Okay? See that? Woo! A little highlight right through there. Boom! Super easy. Okay? Don't need to worry too much about that. Um, now let's go ahead and move on to the eyes. And the eyes do, in fact, have a cast shadow. You want to think about the top of the eyelid. See, this eyelid is actually going to be casting a shadow down like that, so you're going to have a little bit of a shadow going upwards. Sort of like that, I, I, I guess. Something like that. That looks good. That looks pretty good. Okay, so that's how you would go about shading and lighting a character in the normal way. But now... What I want to do is I want to turn up the intensity of this light, and I want to show you guys what happens. Basically, what happens is when you shine a very bright light on a character, um, the exposure, right? Same thing. Going back to imagine you're stepping out into that hot summer day in grade school, and the sun just blinds you, right? Your pupils just shrink down because they're going to be limiting the amount of light that is going to be entering your eyes. So basically what this is going to do is you are going to be like imagine this the light that you're going to be seeing is going to be blown out just a little bit and really it's up to you how much you want it to be blown out in fact let's go ahead and blow it out a lot let's blow it out a heck of a lot let's kind of do that that sexy anime girl by the pool uh thing going on let's get that going on here uh so yeah let's go ahead and just like kick it to yellow as as things begin to blow out, especially like skin, it begins to go more towards uh, yellow. More towards yellow. So you're going to get something like this. You'll be like, whoa! Whoa! What the heck is going on with that? And that looks weird at first, but witness. Witness what happens next. 
Okay, so you got something like that, right? So this skin is super blown out and it looks really weird right now. But what else is going to happen is you've got to consider, you must consider your transitions, your transitions, right? So you can't go necessarily from this like super bright yellow to this kind of desaturated red. What's going to be happening now is actually going to be something more like this. You're going to, you're going to, um, Put a little bit more like orange into the shadows. I guess it's because I don't know, like reflected light or something. But then again, you must remember your transitions. Transitions must be nice. Okay, so you must be nice with your transitions. So you're gonna get something more like this. Okay. Now you are beginning to expose your character. Okay. Same thing. Oh, also yes. Also remember your cast shadows are also going to remain, and they are going to be very high contrast, very high contrast um, cast shadows. So you should get something kind of like this, kind of like that. Okay, now that still looks a little bit weird, but bear with me. We might just make something awesome. We might just make something awesome here. So bear with me. Okay, so let's go ahead and move on to the hair. The reason why it's, it is looking weird is because everything else does not match it. Everything else does not match it yet. Okay, so let's go ahead and move on to the hair. Again, we're going to blow out the hair too. Okay, so in fact, I think a little bit of an easier way to do this might be to do that intermediate color first, right? So go ahead and lighten the hair, but really do, yeah, do that intermediate color. Do that intermediate color, and then you want to go start brightening it, start hue shifting. Another thing is, is hue shifting. I talked a lot about this uh, last daily, I believe. Yeah, I talked about hue shifting and the importance of it, I think, unless I totally just made that up. Okay, so anyway, so check that out. See? Ah, now things are starting to come together a little bit more. Now it's starting to look like she is being lit by a very intense light. But we must make sure we drop in the eyes as well, okay? So let's do the eyes. Everything must be cohesive, otherwise it looks a little bit strange. Strange. Okay, there we go. And, oh, was that it? Oh, I think that was it. Brilliant. Okay, so that is number two. So I want you guys to pay attention between this right here, which is a very kind of soft, ambient lighting and then you move over to something like this where the exposure is now it's basically blowing out the the colors are starting to go towards white and um, this is basically what happens when your eyes uh, again your pupil is shrinking so the easiest way for me to remember this I like to break things down simply is that the lights become lighter and then the darks just by contrast you know these darks are the same as those you know so technically they could be darker you know what I'm saying? It's just you really want to focus on like blowing it out, making it bright, and all that good stuff. Okay. In fact, we could even put a little bit more extra blowing out on the hair there. Something a little bit more like that. And then uh, yeah, you can make the highlight super skinny, so it looks like that. I guess. I don't know. Okay. So um, the last thing we're going to do is again exposure. What if the light is now behind your character? Something really interesting happens when, when this happens. And I want to demonstrate that to you guys right now! Right now! Okay, so um, something that's really cool that happens when the light is behind your character is a few things are going to happen. Because your retinas, or not your retinas, your pupils are now uh, shrinking down, right? Letting less light in. Everything that you are seeing on this character, everything that you're seeing on the character is now going to become very dark. Very, very, very dark. So you're going to get something like this. I've already drawn dark colors on this, but now you're going to get even darker. Even more to the dark side. Which is what everybody wants. Okay, so you're going to get something like that first off, okay? But then, then... The other interesting thing is, um, well, let's go ahead and just draw the, the colors and the shading on there. Okay. But now what's also interesting is that the transitions, you know, say this character is being lit, again, same light source, same direction, same direction, um, 
Now your transitions, oh crap, forgot to lock the thing. Okay, now the transitions are going to be much more subtle, okay? So you're going to get something like this, you're going to get something like that, and then you are going to All right, Dave wants to join. <laughs> He's just like over there opening the door slowly. I'm like, dude, I'm doing a show. <laughs> so uh, I'm doing a tutorial on um, exposure. Mm -hmm. Exposure for artists. Light exposure. Light all exposure. Right. Yeah, yeah. You could probably learn something from this. But anyway, as I was saying, um, all your transitions are now going to become very, very subtle. Okay? And everybody say hi, Deeds. Hi, Deeds. And his awesome facial hair. Hey, I was, guys. I basically look like him. Well, actually, I can't grow facial hair quite as nice as him. But I basically looked like him over the break because I didn't have to shave my face and look proper for the daily. So I was like, hey, what the heck? Let's just uh, let it all hang out. And I looked very scary before the uh, last show that I did. So anyway, um, so yeah, simple transitions, super easy. And yeah, yeah, I think that's about it. Um, let's see here. Uh, the last thing, I actually want to make the skin even darker, a little bit darker. Okay, um, yeah, something a little bit even more like this. Yeah, I think that's pretty nice. And then what's really cool is you can do a little bit of a rim lighting effect, which is basically, you know, the little bit, like imagine you're holding up a mirror and the sunlight just bounces off of it, right? So something that happens with hair Oftentimes, I'm sure you've seen it, when a light is behind a character or a person's hair, you pick up like the edges. The edges pick up the, the light. And they'll look something kind of like this. I'm actually not, notice how I'm not going straight to white and being like, hey, let's do that. No. I'm going to try to do something a little bit more like this. A little bit more like that. Depending on the angle and the glossiness of the hair. And that's always a really, really fun thing to do. This is a common trick that we used when we were creating splashes for Riot. We'd always have a very, um, like, a, a bright light behind the character because it just made it super easy to create a silhouette. Okay, so there are three different ways to light your character and exposure. I hope that really helps out a lot. I think I, I hope that helps out a little bit, rather. Maybe it helps out a lot. Hopefully it helps out a lot. But I still want to fix the transition a little bit more with this girl over here. And then we'll move into a couple more examples, and then we'll end with our question catapults. Okay, but I think the key here is transition. You must remember, don't go straight from this to that, because it just looks really weird. And as you try to blend it, like if you try to blend these two colors, then you start getting like this nasty kind of muddy looking thing going on right there. You want to avoid that. Try to do your hue shift and add some saturation into there because it will create liveliness. It will make your skin look really nice. So the only way that you can get away with this, the only way that you can get away with having a bright color like that against that is if you limit the transition, it, almost like a cell shaded type thing. So you do something like that. See that? So that, again, it still looks fine because the transition is very quick. But if you, have, if you have a slow transition, then you have to hue shift and you must saturate your transitions. All righty. All righty then. So let's go ahead. Actually, that looks a lot better now. It looks a lot better. Cool. So I hope that helps you guys out. Let's go ahead and move into a couple of our final, our final examples. And the first one we're going to look at is the Skullgirls painting that I did for Alex Ahad's awesome game Skullgirls. If you guys don't know what that is, then uh, these are the characters from Skullgirls. And uh, I was basically contacted to do a piece in his guest art gallery for the PC release. So as I was creating this picture, I'm just going to show you a couple things. Um, before I put like a final exposure type thing on this, you can see basically I'm working with the same principles here. Look, uh, let me go ahead and pull this up so you can take a look at the differences that are happening here. See how this yellow, her cap is yellow. And right where the sunlight is hitting it, see it's this bright, bright yellow. But as soon as we shift into the shadow, there's this huge jump, right? And we go to this dark orange, right? It's really nice when you do a shadow for yellow, don't, don't do this. 
Don't, this is what I used to do. It's like, hey, it's yellow. So when we do a shadow for yellow, it goes to here. And oh, do not ever use that. I don't think I've ever seen anybody use this color before. It just doesn't work. Hue shift it down to orange. It makes it look so much better. So we're going from that yellow to that. And then the same thing is happening throughout, right? You can see a lot of big changes, a lot of big, um, a lot of <laughs> big contrast changes. And I actually ended up dropping another layer of contrast onto this because it's like, okay, uh, if you want the picture to appear brighter, and I know this is kind of counterintuitive, but basically all you have to do is darken the shadows, which is basically all I did right here. I just took everything that was dark and just made it darker, and then automatically it looks like a brighter picture. It looks like a more intense sunlight is hitting these characters. Right? Just darken the shadows because it's all about relativity. It's all about relativity. Okay, so yeah, and like you can see, here's a prime example of that. Look at the difference between Annie's skin right here and then it goes to this. See? It goes from that color, look at that, it's like orange, and then it goes to white. Putting those two colors next to each other gives you the impression that it is being overexposed, that you are being subjected to this bright sunlight. Alright, last thing that I want to talk about is uh, how exposure and just lighting your scenes properly can help you out when you're creating pictures like this, right? And creating readability. Readability is where this is really at. Because this is something that I always used to fall into, right? I told myself, okay, I want to make sure that Emma is clearly visible in this picture. The shape of herself is clear in this picture, right? So we can clearly see her silhouette, if you will. Okay. But what's behind her is a bunch of fire. So I was like, okay, well, let's just, it's fire, so it's really bright. So we got to make everything really bright. Make everything really bright and blown out. But then a problem arises. When you squint your eyes, you can't really, you can still kind of see Emma, but there's all these other things that are like pulling your attention everywhere else on the piece. And so what I said was, well, let's use exposure to our advantage. The, the light that is shining on Emma, I will make it so that it is the brightest thing in the picture. And because it is so bright, because her legs and her skin is so bright, the rest of the picture and the rest of the background behind her is going to become darker. Like, notice how the, the fire and all this stuff, it's still very dark orange. You know, oftentimes you draw a fire and you have that white hot light in the middle of it? I don't have that here. All these things are being, like, they're basically being darkened behind her. And what that does is it now allows our character to sit in the front and uh, be very clear. And see, look, this is basically all I did. I had the background like this, and I pulled up the little contrast meter, brightness contrast, and I just kind of darkened it a little bit. And see how even as we darken it more, she becomes more visible. So you can do things like that. I, I challenge you guys to try things out like that. Uh, have your character and your background on separate layers. And then um, sometimes you just got to make sure you know, like, I, I'm always doing uh, value studies on these pictures before I color them in black and white so I can see what these characters are going to look like. In fact, I don't know if I have that. I really hope I do. So I can show you guys. Ah... Uh, Shoot, I don't think I could. Anyway, we can take a look at that another time. But anyway, okay, so because of the brightness that we are receiving into our eyeballs from Emma, everything else around her is becoming darker. Okay, so <laughs> with all that out of the way, I'm going to go open up question catapults. Any catapulted questions uh, through the chat that land in the Cane Kale Kingdom, I will pick up, unwrap as a Christmas gift, even though it is New Year's Eve, and I will answer them. So any final questions that you have, go ahead and do it. Deeb's left his jacket right there. And then we're going to go ahead and end today's daily. Man, today was good. Mm, it was freaking awesome. Oh, and I didn't even show the time lapse of me drawing the girl. Uh, I guess I can pull that up. <laughs> I can pull that up as you guys are asking questions. Because of the lag of the stream, those are things we have to deal with. Thank you, Xbox One, and thank you, kids. Thank you, kids with Xbox One's streaming on crappy internet. Not that I have great internet or whatever, but let's not complain. Let's not complain. Let's be grateful. Okay, so this was called EXP Drawing. Let's open that up. Let's open that up. Okay, so in the meantime, while you're asking all your questions, I'm just going to go ahead and roll the time lapse of me drawing this. Oh, wow. It is literally like 18 seconds. <laughs> um, but, yeah, basically all I did was I just drew this picture, and then I mashed it. Woo! <laughs> I forgot I had turned up the I turned up the time lapse.
uh, speed like really fast because I kept getting these clips that were like they were like 10 minutes long even though they were time lapse and then I have to like crunch them down in After Effects to make them look good. Anyway, okay, I thought that was gonna be way cooler than it was. All right, questions coming in from Too Refined. How do you make time lapses for your stuff? Oh, great question. Great question. I use a program called Cam Studio. Let me go ahead and pull that up. So it's this little thing. Go to camstudio.com and you get this little interface right here. And then there's a record, pause, all that good stuff. And the way that I turn it into a time lapse is I go to video options, and then you're you're gonna want to download like their proper codec and everything. Otherwise, your time lapse is gonna be like millions of gigabytes, like like big files. Just get like the Xvid MPEG four codec, whatever. That's the one that I use. And then I set it to capture frames every three thousand milliseconds, which is three seconds. And then playback rate at 20 frames a second. That's usually a good one. Like if you're working on a big piece, you want to go for at least two to two to three thousand milliseconds. Um, but for smaller pieces, I usually do it every second. And then it just automatically compiles it, and makes a time lapse, much like this. Okay, next question coming in from Zhao Ling, asking, "How would you deal with exposure if the lighting has tinted a certain color?" Oh. Very good question, Zhao Lang. I actually don't know right now. I actually don't know because I haven't, I personally have not had a lot of experience with working with exposure and different colored lights. However, um, in the Emma piece, you could argue that it is kind of like a yellowish firelight. And this is kind of what I was thinking about when I was doing this. And I think what you want to do is, I think the key is in your transition. The transition is where you start to show the color of the light. Like notice how in the shadow, there it, it doesn't go to like there's like a lot of orange in it. Okay, so that might be you know, and even the shadows themselves and her skin is is very much yellow. It's not so much peachy or any of that stuff. So I think that might be how you go about doing it. But that might be that might have to be another tutorial for another time. All right, um, let's see. Last question. <laughs> Last question. Uh, Clarice is asking a great question. As you keep drawing, do you become faster with drawing certain things? And yes, of course. But I want to let you guys know, and this is something that I kind of want to, I mean, this might be a good Thoughtful Thursday thing, is drawing never necessarily becomes easy. I think as artists, we're always just looking for, we're always looking for things to challenge us. We're always looking for that next step. We don't want to draw things that we've already drawn millions of times. Even though I'm drawing the comic every day, I feel like every page there's always just like a new environment, a new object, a new angle I have to draw something from. And so I'm constantly like being challenged. But what's cool is uh, your experiences from the past will always come in to help you. Like uh, a certain panel or a certain page of the comic could be like, oh, I remember throwing together a certain shot like this when I was doing the splash for this character in League of Legends or this color style, or this color scheme, or setting this type of mood. I think those things all fall into place. So, yes, things will always get easy, but I think it just, or things become easier, but I think you're always improving as an artist, so you're always constantly challenging yourself. And that's a good thing. That's a good thing. So if you feel like every time you sit down to draw something, you always feel like you're being challenged, and you're asking yourself, oh, shouldn't this be easy by now? Don't be frightened by that, because that's your inner self saying, no, I must challenge myself. This is something new. There's something about this that I have not done before. So, with all that out of the way, I'm going to go ahead and end episode 143 of the Kane Kale Show. Thank you guys for joining me live on Twitch as usual. I hope you guys got some good value out of this. I'll see you guys tomorrow for whatever Wednesday where I'm going to be drawing more of your characters. Until then, you guys take care.